Are we there? Are we there? I think we're live. <laughs> <laughs> we're live. Good morning. Well, maybe good afternoon. If you're on the East Coast, it's barely good afternoon. It's noon here in Central Time. Welcome, welcome. It is So Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates, and we are back again this week. So we are here this week doing stuffed animals. And if you have watched for very long, you know I kind of love making the stuffed animals. So this is a pretty exciting one. I'm very much looking forward to it. We have a special guest that's going to come on. It's going to be all sorts of fun. Um, and we're doing a two-parter. So originally, this was going to be a three-parter, and it was going to be in the same week. And now we're doing it two parts, two weeks. So we'll be here today, and we're going to talk about the basics of getting ready for this and sewing through some of the um, bit of the different construction that works with this pattern. And then we'll be back next week, too. So um, I want to make sure that you know that we'll be back to complete it next week. And I hope that maybe you can participate and get to the point of help or putting it together with me next week. Um, it'll be very fun. We'll go through a bunch of stuff today. I'm pretty excited about it. So before we get into the actual tutorial, of course, we want to remind you that if you share the video, we will do a giveaway. So every week we do a giveaway of a Sew Together Tuesday tote bag with a kit inside and a mug and some other chachi stuff. So Hawk will show you that. It's pretty fun. So if you share the video, then you will be entered to win. And at the end of the show, we'll grab two names and we will call you out at the end of it. Say, ta-da, you won. So <laughs> you'll win the, the kit for the week and we'll send you a kit. We think, we didn't confirm this before we started, but I'm just going to say it, that we're just going to send you the kit for the draft. So that that's, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'll, I will cut out for draft kits two we'll for this, two this week's week. episode two for next week's episode they will look like that when you get them <laughs> so we're going to be extra nice and give you a cutout kit because that's the way to start making a stuffy in my opinion is to have it already cut out for you so and they're going to get they'll, <laughs> so they'll we'll get the that. pattern too you'll get the pattern because rena's giving away the pattern so we'll get the pattern sent to you in a pdf and then we'll send you the fabric kit and then um, you'll be able to make your own little stuff. Each Rena's day. not giving everybody the pattern, just those four people. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just, right. yes, just make, just yes. making so, sure. So they'll get a tote bag <laughs> and a mug, but not the kit. They'll get this kit. Got it. <laughs> just to confuse y'all. Cause you're going to make that cute little guy. And who doesn't want to make that guy? He's adorable, right? I love it. <laughs> or she, whatever it wants to be. Um, yeah. So that's what we're making this week. So anyway, all right, so this week is the giraffe. I'm very excited because it is from Rustic Horseshoe, and we have worked with Rustic Horseshoe a few times. I've done a few of her patterns, and I'm very excited to be doing one again. So we started the first time that we did a Rustic Horseshoe design for a tutorial was back in the middle of 2020, and we did the Nutty Nag, which is her little one of her horse patterns. So she has several, and uh, so it's a cute little. It's shaped very much like that, and it's a cute little horse pattern. That has done very well, and people really love that horse pattern. So we ended up doing, um, we did that one in 2020, and then in 22, I think, maybe it was 21, we did the Nutty Nag. I can't remember. It's been so long now. So we did it in the past, and that's a three-dayer, I think, too. And then last year, she was on our tour when we did the big nationwide shop hop of all the different quilt shops that we stopped at she was one of our stops along that tour we got to do a little behind the scenes with her and see some of the stuff that she was working on and kind of talk about her process of designing them so it was a very fun episode if you didn't get to see it i would totally recommend going back and watching that and if you just look for rustic horseshoe sew together tuesday on youtube you should find it and i do think it was a really fun one we got to see some really interesting things and then talk about how she designs them so we brought her back this week and we're going to chat with her just a little bit and ha half a second here to me and be able to do a little catch up and see what she's working on now. So let's see if we can make that work. If Jeremy can. We're going to do a little juggle with the, with the cameras and the we're audio. Gonna a little bit, so I'm going to go gonna back here and, and show you some stuff while we're getting the other video set up. Hey, Hippo. let's see if we can get this. Elephant. And my new favorite buddy, check this sloth out. He is so <laughs> cute. He's so cute. And what's special about him? He's got magnetic hands. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll take Hawk out.
I can't hear you. I'm not muted, but I can hear Teresa. I'm going to get one of the audios to work. All right. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Good. All right. I can hear you. Now, hopefully everybody can hear us too. <laughs> Thanks for working along with us. It's always these things with the trying to have guests is always, is always a bit of a thing. I love doing it, but the audio is always an issue. So anyway, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I am doing well. It has been a year and a little since we were yeah. there. We were there in February of last year. It was very cold. <laughs> it gets cold in Arizona. <laughs> it does surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very fun. We talked a bunch about the stuff that you did. So when we were there, you were talking about the flamingo, which I know has come out, right? The flamingo mm -hmm. floaty. Is that what it's called? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And that was super cute. So that's a little... It's just a little stuffy that looks like a little floaty, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you have do you have it? Yeah. Do, oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> wearing it. <laughs> so let's see. Because I remember you were mostly done with that one. That one's adorable. Yes. Thank you. Let's so see. cute. Ooh, there we go. So that's so how big is that? Across. Um, it's, well, kind of. It maybe looks like 20 inches or yeah, probably. Right yeah, that's there. That's a great size. I love that. So you had the, you had the flamingo. What else were you working on at that point? Um, I was working on the cactus. The cactus. That's right. Because we have the cactus somewhere. We have the little guy. Yeah. Oh, he's right the, down here. We'll have to bring him up. Well, this yeah. One's, this one's got all my pins in it. Yes. Yeah. And then also so if anybody, there's a whole so, version. Right. So if anybody followed along with us on the road last year, this guy rode, he was kind of like the ride or die along with the, the little lammy. Um, and he sat in the front of the RV the whole time after January, like you just rode in the front of the RV. So it's with us too. So the, the one that you had, this one is made with cuddle dimple. The one that you had there is made with the Lux cuddle Hawk, right? Yeah. The big one? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which is super fun. And that one you make it, so it's little like a pin cushion or you can make it clear. Yeah, it's two different patterns, the pin cushion, and then um, that one's separate because it's done a little differently and so small. Okay. And then um, I have a pattern that's the, the throw pillow and also up to however tall you want to make. I made one six foot. Oh, wow. So, so um, Very cool. Yeah, it was a lot that's of fun. Cool. So do you, put, do you put something inside of the big tall one to make it stand up so it doesn't just lunk over absolutely and it's it's stuffed with fiber fill on the top to shape it out and then it's mm -hmm. filled with lean bag filler otherwise it gets too heavy oh and it's like really hard to keep standing up and interesting so, so that's like the little the little styrofoam balls yeah with the bean bag yeah. filler is got it oh that's really interesting so that's one of the things i really like about your patterns is like there's really these kind of innovative ways of doing different things, which I think is super fun. So we'll well, talk about you. that more as we're doing the, as we're doing the tutorial today, but I do, I love the way that you do that. So thank it's you. great. Okay. So what else have you done since then? The snake, right? Uh, you have the snake with you? The snake. The snake was super fun. We had him at Ro no at quilt festival last year and yeah. we wrapped him around a light pole. And this guy, sorry, this camera's all backwards for me. All right. I actually quilted cuddle. Well, That's quilted awesome. as far as did the, you pieced that it. Takes some, yeah, that takes some time and attention to make sure everything goes the same direction. But mm -hmm. I love how he turned out. And this guy yeah. has um, armature in him, so I can just shape him all around. Yep. Got, I love the way he like crackles. <laughs> yeah, you can hear hear all that moving in there. But it, it yeah, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of fun with the rattles. That's great. So, are there actually rattles in his tail? Um, I put jingle bells. Perfect. So that's what's in there. I did, I did do one with an actual rattle, but they're they're a little more round, like okay. And so mm -hmm. it doesn't quite get the same look. So the look to get the little small like sections for the rattle, right? The mm -hmm. Great. Oh, that's cool. Just the ones that you would get like at the craft store. Yep. Right. Okay. Yep. Very cool. Absolutely. Very cool. And then the elephant's been since then. Yep. And this one. It's been a busy year. Yeah, this one, the elephant came out in December. Okay. Got it. And, and he the has the, the nose too, right? That articulate? Yeah. 
Yeah. Cause I got my own. Yeah. And, um, of course, because I like options, there's an option mm -hmm. for just a static trunk so that you can keep it real simple. But if you want to get oh, okay. real creative and have some fun, you can put the armature in there. So both options are Very cool. included in that one. Very cool. And so, then because, because the armature is not something that I would normally be able to find, where do you have a place that you send people for that? I get mine through um, crafts.com. Okay. CR crafts. Okay. I haven't found it locally. I don't have a lot of local options myself. So most right. of my shopping is online anyway. Yeah. So. Um, is there a video that you've done at all, a tutorial for putting the armature in anything? Yes. Um, yeah. The, okay. elephant. the elephant has one. And then the snake also has a, a video for. Got it. Okay, go. Good, good. Because I feel like that's something that's so far outside of the norm of sewing <laughs> like yeah. getting the extra help would be great but it's such a great addition to the actual animals it is and then my latest addition with the armature is the sloth and yes. uh, thanks Hawk, for that one because i was doing the jointed deck and then he's like well why don't you put armature in the arms and i'm like you know that could work it and could i put work. it in the legs too and so, oh that's awesome so this um this one was my most recent pattern. I love this mm -hmm. guy. And um, so this is an option. Obviously, you can make it real simple and easy. No mm -hmm. armature, no jointed neck. But I also included the jointed neck option. Right. Right. Because the one that fun. I have, the one that yeah. I have is the like simpler version that doesn't have, like his head doesn't doesn't move. Yeah. Like it just and he doesn't have the armature. He's just right. the, just the easy, the arms. basic. But yeah. actually, the joints yeah. and the armature aren't that difficult if you want to take the time to tackle Right. Right. So they, I think that's the thing with a lot of the a lot of the things with the stuffed animals is that they aren't really hard. It's just taking a little bit of extra time to do them. Um, but they yeah. add so much when you do it. And I love like the magnets in his hands, you know, the sloth's hands. It's so good. Yeah. So much fun. A lot, a lot of fun. And now that I've dived into armature, I'm like, oh, I want to put it in everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've thought about it, but I haven't done it yet. But my newest design is the dragon. He's so, so cute. So this one is one I'm working on now, and it should, hopefully, I'm aiming for an early August release. Very nice. And where nice. you use armature in this one, other than if you wanted the hands. I have wire uh -huh. in here right now, but it's the oh. tail. Oh, oh, got it. So you can move it around if you want. And you can even do jointed neck. I haven't dived into any of that with it yet, but right. yes. Yeah, so right. Is, so what are you using is in his little wings? Is that just like um, a foam stabilizer? Um, these wings have foam stabilizer where you see the the ribs, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And I cut the foam stabilizer out of the middle. So these would have a little bit more of that right. movement for that. Yep. And then I, they have a chenille stem in oh, here. Oh, okay. In, it's soft and it gives a little bit of that shape, but it's not too mm -hmm. rigid. Right. But I have more than one wing option. So this wing <laughs> option is me and my option. That one's great. You and your options. You. <laughs> this wing I'm option. I'm excited to see options. I love it. <laughs> yeah, this one has the, the foam stabilizer throughout the uh -huh. whole thing. So it oh, makes it okay. So it's got different it. for this style of wing. So it just depends. But mm -hmm. yeah, this one, she's got a little different horns and yep. different look and and the horns have some sort of a like a wire in that as well to make them do that shape. This style does not. This okay. has no wire. That's how it's just designed. And it's got a little spike on his nose. So there's that one. Um, it's very Pete yeah. Pete's dragon esque to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when I was making him, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of how he turned out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this one does have a wire, and that's okay. so that you can shape it how you want. And that if is you so want. Fun make it have like straight up horns that could have straight up horns or just curl back so that's right. one of the options oh to, that's uh, very cool give you a little bit more versatile versatility with it so that's super fun so you said that is coming out probably august sometime so a couple months I, yeah i'm aiming for august Got it. Very cool. So one of the things that I think is really <laughs> the purple dragon has hawks mohawk. Exactly. That's what he was like, I want the mohawk. <laughs> and that one. Okay. So going back to it, I remember, so I follow you on Facebook, which people can, there's rustic horseshoe, like patterns and tutorials fan page or something. I can't remember what it's called, but there is like yeah, a fan page. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
so there's there's both the that page and then the like, kind of a community ca- page, kind of like we have with I Love Cuddle. Um, but yes. I remember seeing on there that you had said that the fur was a little extra hard. Putting that yes. one in there, yeah, okay. And this, so. <laughs> this actually is not the fur. Oh, I um, did the fur because I wanted to see how it works out. And if somebody really wants to put in the time and frustration to add fur, <laughs> but then I it's also, not going to be you. <laughs> Right. I'm, I'm not doing the fur again on this whole thing, just especially in the smaller areas, like the tail, when you're trying to sew it, just, it was not fun. Was it, too, um, was it too stiff? Is that what it was or too dense? It was too bulky and yeah, not so much the stiff, but just way too bulky to fit in there. I had to hand stitch the whole side of the tail. Got it. Um, because I couldn't sew that with the machine. And there was just some really bulky spots that I've sewn with fur and things before, but it's usually mm-hmm. just with the fur and a little small spot but this right, whole right. thing yeah it, it wasn't fun Too but much. I wanted to see how it looks with the feather boa so I cut off all that fur and then oh. I attached the feather boa so I could see how it looked Perfect. with that thing so <laughs> um the fur went goodbye it looked good once it was done mm-hmm. I wasn't like angry at it and cut it off it was my plan all along right. to just try it and cut it off but mm-hmm. uh, I like the real soft the boa is great yeah. yeah. So is that stitched into the top seam then or just hand stitched on? Hand stitched on. There's really no way to sew it in very That's well. That's what I was thinking. It would be really much easier just to hand stitch it and not a hard hand stitch either. Like No, and you can yeah. even tack it with like some hot glue to hold it in place and then right. hand stitch it to get it that good and secure on there. And then it's yeah. a lot of fun just the way that it moves. And- That's very cool. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to that one coming out too, because, you know, I'll have to try that one, especially with the mohawk, you know. And it's so fun because you can do all the fun fabrics with it. The sparkle. The sparkle, which we love. Yeah. yeah. So if you have, if you want to make that dragon and you want to make it with sparkle, go get your sparkle now. Yeah. It's being discontinued. So, yeah. So if you need a restock, let me know, Rena. Okay. <laughs> yes, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> that sparkle is lovely. And it really is just absolutely perfect for the dragon. It is like, so good for yeah. the dragon. Perfect yeah. for it. Well, very good. Do you have any others that are in the works or just ideas right now? Um, just ideas right now. I mean, other than one like this, those horses, the horse the horses. One <laughs> from last year, it's still in the same basket, but um, yeah. I've made so many horse patterns. I figured I needed to get some other animals in there. Mm-hmm. So reluctantly, I tabled that one for a little while. And I'll right. Right. But other no, than that, I. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I remember I just saw your bovine behind there and I did the bovine too. Can you show him really quick? quick, Cause I don't have mine here. He's adorable. This is the blissful bovine and he is super fun. Yeah. The nose ring is just, it was, yeah, the key. I used a D ring for the nose ring on mine. It worked out great. The cloven hooves. We'll talk about that a little bit either this week or next week. We'll talk about that and how those are done because the cloven hooves are different than the round hooves and a little harder. A A little harder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, is there a is there a Highland Cal version of that? Blissful yeah, it's bovine? the same pattern. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I use the same Just pattern. Just a, a longer fur. Yeah, in my tutorial, I show what I did. I mm-hmm. used um, a faux fur and I shaved some of it in certain spots. Got it. I how to do that. Certainly don't have to. There's been plenty of people make it with like the um, shag fabric mm-hmm. and not shave it, and it looks really cute. And but there's definitely some Highland horns specifically in that. Pattern. Oh, got it. Okay. That's very cool. Very cool. Okay. So we're going to get going with the giraffe before we go though. I'd like to know your number one tip for working with your patterns or for making stuffies. In general for making stuffies mm-hmm. is um, trust the process, yeah. follow the instructions and you'll succeed and um, stuff them. Well, especially the head and the neck and the face, yeah. just stuff those really firmly. And then you can kind of gradually stuff out the body where it's not quite as firm. Mm-hmm. Same with the feet in the pudgy plushy style is stuff the bottom of the feet really firm. So they give that weight and fill it yep. out and then don't stuff the rest of the legs very firm. Keep them a little bit more movable. So with Got the it. pudgy plushy specifically, those would be my top tips. Very cool. Very cool. Well, good, good. We will definitely incorporate some of those into what we're doing um, for this tutorial for sure. Uh, we will be back. As I told you later this year, we're going to do another one of uh, the rustic horseshoe patterns. We're going to be doing one of the stick horses or a variation on that. What do you call those, those patterns? Are they um, not stick horses? What do you call them? Ride on toys. 
right on toys. There we go. So we'll, toys, yes, forward, just, yeah. so we'll be looking forward to that. Um, you can visit rustichorseshoe.com and you can find all of her patterns, including the giraffe. We have a coupon code. It is all caps, Shannon Leifer 30, correct? No spaces. Okay. No spaces. No spaces. Type that into the discount code, a little section that's on the website, and you'll get 30% off the giraffe pattern. So it's just for the giraffe pattern, but you will see she's got a ton of other patterns um, that are really fun, including a bunch of other stuffies and some like wall art and then the ride on toys as well. So there's lots of stuff to check out on her website. So make sure that you do that. All right. So we will talk to you later this fall. I'm sure, Rena, when I do that little ride on toy, and uh, I'll need some help with that too. All right. I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. We'll see you later. Stuff. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, let's get this switched on. Are on. There we go. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to stop the camera. Bink. And it's out. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rita, for coming to join us again. And thanks, you guys, for being here with it. We've had so much fun with her patterns and I really have just enjoyed getting to know her and getting to understand the stuffed animal design process a little bit more. Um, it is a lot. I didn't realize we had so many of hers here. We do have a lot and I'm missing a couple of them still too. So, all by, right. And by missing, we mean that they're out at stores doing work. They are. They're <laughs> out doing work. They're doing their job and being cute in stores. Um, okay. So, the giraffe is what we're working on today. And we have, as you can see, it all cut out. We have it ready to go um, and ready to sew. The first thing I really want to talk about is what we need to have for the pattern and why we chose what we did. So let's do the ingredients list. We'll go over that real quick. Um, and then we'll talk about those choices that I made on fabrics. So you're going to need a yard or a half a yard of Cuddle 3 Baby Giraffe, which is this cute little giraffe print. Then I used a quarter yard of the Cuddle 3 Mocha. And then 10 by 15 pieces is what you're going to need of chocolate and beige. If you have to buy it at the store, you're going to need to buy a quarter yard of those and you'll have plenty. Um, but if you have some scraps, that's how much you need to be able to use it. And you can use lots of different colors with that. Those are just the ones we have here. Uh, we also use 9014 Stretch Needle, of course, by Schmetz, Polyester Sewing Thread with Mettler Metrocene. <clears throat> excuse me, the clover flower head pins, micro serrated scissors from Karen K. Buckley. We will also be using the silky polyfill and poly pellets from Fairfield. 20, 30, 20 to 30 millimeter safety eyes, the false eyelashes and basting spray, which is the OD505. So all of those things are things that we will be using for this project. Um, the sample that we made, we chose fabrics are a little bit different. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about today was fabric choice and why you might choose certain things. So in this one, we chose all of the fabrics, if I remember right, we chose fabrics that matched, according to the website, the baby giraffe fabric. And so we chose some fabrics. So let's talk about these and show which we're using for what, okay? So we changed it. So what I just read to you is a little different than what we used here, okay? But we're gonna stick with the, um, the beige for the ears and we have chocolate for the inside of the ears. We have chocolate for his horn tips. And then this fabric here is cappuccino, correct? Yes. And this but, is the one that we took but out. We're gonna of, switch it for mocha. We're gonna switch it for mocha because we didn't particularly love this. So it's not bad. So we just this, didn't love it. it's a little bit of a warmer brown mm -hmm. is the mocha and it matches the, the baby giraffe a little better. And it's a little darker than, than and we liked this. the darker piece down the middle. We looked at pictures of giraffes and tried to figure out how, well, how do we really want it? So it's kind of interesting because one of the things about making stuffies is you have to like choose your kind of accent fabrics before you get started. Um, and so we just, we chose that way and then we didn't particularly love it. I mean, I love it. I'm not saying I don't love it. I do. But if I have to make it again, which I do, I'm going to choose fabrics a little differently. So the other thing we did is that we chose the shaggy. And we'll talk a little bit more about his his mane. But we chose the, um, the Lux Cuddle Shaggy. I think it's chocolate beige, I think is what this one is called. And we use that for his mane and for his tail. I also tried to use it for the horn tips. And let's just say that was not fun. Where is the finished one? Oh, that's a great question. I don't yeah. know where it's at. 
I'm not sure where it's at, but we did, we did make one. If we stumble onto it, I'll show it to you. Um, but it was just, it was too much. <laughs> so we decided like that thing came out really big. Like this was, you can imagine, this was like a big, huge puff <laughs> ball up big here. Big poof balls on top right there. Huge and puff this ball. is, this is cuter. So this was way cuter. Let's see, is that? So yeah, this is the size of them. So it was like this big puffy thing. <laughs> which was just a lot it was just a lot and so we decided we liked it better so i redid it i did it with these um and then the, we're still going to stick with the beige for the nose the muzzle and the nostril flap we've got the beige for his belly and then this is the mocha oh. which we're using for all of his hooves and which we will use for the face gusset and the horns okay so that information should be if i remember correctly it should all be on the blog as to which fa those three fabrics four fabrics mm -hmm. um and what i used for what okay the the blog the show notes or the well the, the shade it's of fabrics the blog. blog post it's on Got the it. blog so the show notes will be up there probably tomorrow um because there was a lot of things to add to it but the blog post is up there that tells you a bunch of little things including which fabrics i used okay so fabrics i used for this one will be different for the end because we're going to do things a little differently with this one okay so choosing the fabric is kind of um Sometimes it's a little bit hit or miss, I guess. So we chose a couple of different things that we decided not to use. One was the brown shaggy, just decided it was it was too much and it didn't do the thing that we wanted it to do. The other was that we bought the Lux Cuddle Giraffe fabric, which is this, which is really nice. And I decided that I really like the flatness of the Cuddle 3. So this is available as well, Lux Cuddle version, which is just thicker. Yes, yeah, so you can see the difference in them and they are much this is much plusher so she does have images of the giraffe made with this fabric in the pattern so one of the things that i really like about rena's patterns is that she'll have a whole page of inspiration for you for you to see it made out of other fabrics and other combinations as we were talking about her patterns always have lots of different combinations for you to choose from so you can kind of pick the easiest one or just the look that you like so one of the things that you can do with this one is you can have two piece legs that are actually um, the print at the top and then a section of solid and then the hooves. So you get another, you get another variation mm -hmm. in the fabric choice, like right about here. Yep. And then the, um, the main has two different choices. We're doing the simpler main is what I'll show you how to do uh, with this tutorial. This was a little bit harder main with the, the fur type of thing. And then um, the hooves are another big thing. So we're going to do the round hooves and I will show you how to do cloven hooves a little bit next time um they're a little bit different and we will work through those so these are time. these are the, those the, are the round the, hooves I, i'm gonna call them the simple the simple hooves. they are the simple ones <laughs> so when you get the pattern you're gonna find there's all of these different pattern sheets in there so i want to kind of talk about like once you've got the pattern so let's show that so the pattern is going to come if you can buy it as a printed pattern or you can get it easily from her website as a PDF and it is printed out and it prints out exactly the same. So I have both versions. Um, like I said, you can see, so this is a version that is with that Lux Cuddle. Okay, so this is the Lux Cuddle version with the legs that are the two-tone legs. Oh yeah, the two-tone legs too. Okay. Cool. So you're gonna get that and you're gonna get all of the pattern pieces. If I, oh, did oh, I cut them all out? Full color. So they're beautiful. Okay, yeah, all of this is super great info. instructions. Here's more and some of her. So this is like the ride on toy the wall art. So lots and lots of inspiration for you here. Made out of cotton as well, but you can tell it's so much cuter in cuddle. So oh, poor cotton. It's so cute in cuddle. Uh, <laughs> poor cotton giraffe. <laughs> but as you, get all the, as you get all of the pattern pages, you're going to find there, um, you'll find some that are the variations. Okay, so let me see if I can find one. Here we go. So that, that split leg option is here. So you kind of need to go through, look at it, try to figure out what you want to do. I really do suggest kind of reading through the pattern a little bit before you decide what exactly you want. Definitely um, read through the pattern before you start cutting stuff out, Hawk. So <clears throat> we have some things that we're going to talk about because um, <laughs> I assigned Hawk to, <laughs> to cut things out for me. And it went mostly great. Okay, But there are a couple little things. And because I've worked with the patterns a few times, I understood some things. I didn't understand some other things. So let's start with the main piece, okay? So the main piece is here. So it turns out this is actually two main pieces. And when I cut it out, when I cut out the pattern piece, I cut this as one huge piece. 
And this is all I needed actually for the, the fur, the, which we use the Lux Cuddle for this one. So when you look at his, his mane is at least twice as big as it's supposed to be. I can't tell if he's got a mohawk or if there's a porcupine on the back of his head. Yeah, because <laughs> I cut this entire piece out of the shaggy and not this piece out of the shaggy. So there's your fair warning. So we're doing it with fabric this time. We're going to be doing it with the Cuddle 3, and we cut it out of this, okay? One of the things to take note is that we cut it so that the stretch is this direction on here, so that when we cut it, it will um, twist a little bit. And when we get there, we'll show you. But this one gets cut out sideways. The rest of it, she will tell you which way the nap is going. She'll also tell you sometimes the lengthwise grain. Ignore that when you're making it with cuddle. You just really care about the nap direction. Okay, so that's the thing to watch because sometimes it's the opposite of what you think it's going to be. For the horn, especially when we did it with the shaggy and with the mane is the same way is that the nap kind of goes the opposite direction you think it should. It doesn't go from top to bottom. It goes the other direction so it will stand up more. Okay, so the, the Lux Cuddle Shaggy, that's the way um, that stands up really well because the nap is facing up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Normally we, you want it all to pet down, but with some of the, the furry bits, you want it to... You want them to stand up and it. you got to play with the, the, the nap that way. Some of the other patterns that we found, which also will throw you under the bus just a little, Hawk, is that they, some of the patterns are cut so that you will sew them and then cut them rather than cutting them and then sewing them. So let's start with the nostril flap and we're gonna talk through that a little bit and talk through cutting it as well. So this is the nostril flap, okay? The eyelid is also here and these were the two. When they have dots around them, this means something different. So it tells you, follow instructions in tutorial. So this is definitely a place where you should go look at the instructions and then cut it out, okay? <laughs> that will be a little bit easier. So the way that Hawk cut it out was he cut it along the, the line and then cut these pieces out. Okay, so that they are this size of this outer piece. The truth is you need to cut this piece out and we're gonna trace this because tracing this and cutting on that line is gonna be a lot easier than trying to pin these right sides together. And, and, and sew, sew that, that little, little guy. Yeah, got it. Doesn't sound like fun. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with there. Before I do that though, I want to show how I got the pattern to this point. Okay, so you'll notice that this has a little bit of plastic on it. And this is the way all of my pattern pieces do. Okay. And I'm just going to show you with this piece here. So this is what I do. At the beginning of the pandemic, all of my pattern pieces were covered with packing tape because that was what I had. <laughs> we were all dealing with what do we have right now to use? And packing tape worked fine, but it does take longer. So recently I've started buying these laminating sheets and they work really well. So basically, I'm going to try to flip this over. Stick this on here and just kind of get it on here. Okay, so now this is laminated, and then I take my little what are the a brayer that is used for all sorts of different things and just smash it down. It is so not a, it's not a seam roller though, right? Because it that's, is not a seam roller. That's different because this thing right here looks very similar. Yeah, so this is the Violet Craft seam roller, and the thing that's different about it, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell, is that there is a little hump right here so that it gets just your seam and then the edges will be loose. So it's not gonna press down the whole area because we wanna just press your seams. So that works differently than this, which is flat the whole way across. Okay. And it's also a little, a little squishy. squishy. So you can use a credit card and push across or anything like that, but it just does, it gets it to seal down. If there's a little pucker in there, I really don't ever care. So that's how I do my patterns and then I cut them out. Okay, that makes it so when you do all that tracing around, Especially if you're using like a felt tip marker, it's going to get the edges of your pattern kind of damp, and we don't really want that to happen. What's happening? What brand is the? Are those those self laminating sheets? They're Everybody's Avery. super excited about them. They're, They're just Avery. you just find right. them at the, like the They're. Office Depot or you know something like that. Um, That's yeah. true. We did. We, it was just Office Depot. We yeah. just got them off the shelf, and yeah. you could definitely order them. I'm sure that you can order them online. Yeah, they work really really well, and they they are just called laminating sheets. So. Get the cheaper ones, it's totally fine. You're gonna just slap them on there, push it down real good. And you can laminate both sides if you're gonna use it over and over again. I just do one, but it does keep the edges of the paper from getting kind of damp and getting misformed, which will happen if you just use the paper. 
and try to like trace around it a bunch of times because some of them like the legs you trace around a lot of times especially if you cut it out twice right <laughs> it's a lot of legs okay so let me show you how we're going to do the nose and this is for the eyelids as well okay so let's show that really quick so this is the eyelids so hawk thought you put the fold Sorry to throw you under the bus. Don't throw me all the way okay. under the bus. It's totally fine. So he put, he, put, he put the fold here, put oh. this against the fold, and then cut it out. But that's not really how we're supposed to do it. Okay. So what we're really going to do, we have two of those two that we can, we can do, is that we're going to actually cut along the black line. Okay. And I'm just going to cut along there. The same like I did there for that nose flap. And then we're going to put these on here so that there is a fold. So I'm just going to do this. Just so you can see it. And I'm going to trace it. All right, I'm just going to trace right across that top. So what's weird about this one, this is a little bit different because we're going to actually sew two layers of this together and the naps are going in opposite directions. So normally we try to sew with the naps going in the same direction, which is what I'm going to do here. So this one I'm going to pet it. So if I pet, I pet it parallel to the selvage. So here's my selvage. If I pet one way, I can see it stands up. If I pet it the other way, it lays down. Okay. Yeah, the selvage has those little holes in it. Yep. Okay. So if I pet it this way, that's the way my nap is going. So one of the things that I'll do is fold it over this way and write a little arrow. So now when I flip it over, I can't get lost in which way my nap is actually going. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half. Turn this around so you guys can see it a little better. Okay, and now I know this is the way. And also the patterns are written. So the direction of the nap generally it's just going to be straight down from the way that the words are written so the words are written so this is the top does that make sense it does okay. most of them have arrows but the smaller pieces might not smaller pieces might not exactly so again i'm just going to trace around it okay so in the pattern so this is where it, like it becomes the thing that you have to read the pattern is the eye we're going to stow all the way across so that it's sealed shut the nose flap, we're just sewing this part here. All right. These are parts that you have to read the pattern. So <laughs> of anything I can tell you with making stuffies is to please I feel read so, the pattern. I feel so called out right now. Oh, no. Why? What happened? No, no, because, because I didn't read the pattern all the way. Well, you did, weren't making it either. You were just cutting it out for me. Like, can you cut that out for me? Sure. And you did. But you didn't have to read the whole pattern. So we're going to cut out these two pieces or we're going to sew these two pieces and then cut them out. Okay. So let's do the do the eye first. And this is the eyelid. And the reason that we want to do it like this is it just makes it easier to be able to control this whole piece. So as an example, these two pieces, this will be much easier to control than this tiny little thing because this will stretch as you're going around and do weird things. Same will happen here. We don't want that. So we're just going to stick this in here. This is my sewing line. Okay. What's my stitch length on? 2.5. That's what I like to use for stuffed animals is a 2.5 or a 3. And mostly because those seams are going to get a little more stress. This is the eyelid, so it's not going to get any stress, but we're going to leave it there for right now. So not to scare anybody off, but uh, Avi asked, can this be done in an hour show? So can we talk about an overall sort of time expectation here? So no, it cannot be. We're going to talk about part of it today, and it'll probably be about an hour and a half. And then we'll do it next week for about the same. It takes me generally about four hours to make it completely from start to finish. And it took me about two hours to cut all the pieces for one. Right. And that's, yeah. And part of that is, you know, you're sort of newish to cutting. So it would, I can do it a little bit faster. We'll show you a couple of ways that you can make it a little bit faster. You cut them with the Karen K. Buckley scissors. Is that true? A bunch of that. And I and, and then you use, use the, rotary. the rotary cutter for the C3. Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk about using the um, both of those because you can use a rotary cutter with part of it. Okay, so I've got the eyelid sewn and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin the nostril flap. So if there is, um, if you need to mark it differently, so you remember not to sew certain spaces and spots, 
uh, there is no judging because this is me too. Okay, so I'm going to not sew this part. And I'm going to tell you this so that somebody will stop me when I try to go across there. Okay, <laughs> we're going to sew down around and back up this little side. Okay, just sewing the bottom. All right. So I'm just going to follow that. So again, that line that I stitched is this, or the line that I traced is the stitching line and not a cutting line. So there really isn't necessarily a cutting line. She kind of shows you like this is how you could kind of cut around it. But really it's, it's just the stitching line that you're paying attention to here. Well, I loved that where you left the needle down and you just spun it in there. But you couldn't do that if you didn't have the whole fabric as handles, basically. Not as easily, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that little pivot thing works really well. All right, so we're going to check the bottom of my nose. It's not perfectly on the line, but you know what? It's smooth enough. I'm going to let it go. All right, and now we can cut this out. So this is a funky little shape. I will give you that. So we're going to use the scissors to cut this one out. All right, and because this has to turn inside out, I want to cut it nice and close. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut off the top part here. And that didn't need a seam allowance for later? No, it gets shoved up inside. It's okay. Okie dokie. I mean, that's the way I did it the first time and it worked. So Rena's here. She can tell me. So now <laughs> I'm just going to cut it. And I'm actually going to cut this at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, which is clearly something that you couldn't sew it at. So we would normally sew it at a half an inch seam allowance, and that's really to give us some wiggle room. So I'm going to cut it really nice and narrow here, and that'll help it kind of come when it turns inside out. Okay. I cut this two layers at a time, and I'll tell you if you're in a class, I'll tell you to cut it one layer at a time, and that's really because this bottom layer likes to move. So the bottom layer isn't as small of a seam allowance as the top because they won't, they won't actually stick together perfectly. Okay. So now I'm actually going to snip just a couple little times here on this side just to cut it just a little bit. Really, I'm doing it to see if it will make a difference as I flip it and see if one side is smoother coming out than the other. Give it a little flick, sorry. Okay. So now can turn that out, turn out my little corner, turn out my little corner. And I don't see that either of these looks any smoother than the other. Let's see if I can tell. This is the one I clipped. This is the one I didn't clip, and I don't really see any difference. So I would At say no scale, reason to clip. Got it. Okay. Cool. So that was kind of that experiment. All right. Let me throw that away. So that's how the nostril flap is done, which is kind of just a funny word to say. <laughs> and that's going to get sewn onto here. All right. We'll do that in a minute. I want to show you the eyelid. So here's the eyelid. We're going to give this a try. So we're literally just going to try it live because that's what we do. Um, so this is the 28 millimeter rotary cutter from Ulfa. So I like a little small rotary cutter to cut around curves. If you are not super comfortable with a rotary cutter, stick with the scissors. It's totally fine. But if you, like me, find yourself happy you're cutting things with a rotary, something like this is really good. The thing that is different about using the small one compared to a normal, so this is a 45 millimeter rotary cutter, which most of us are familiar with, this is the 28. So it's much smaller, but your turning radius, is like, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. Is much smaller. So I can turn a lot easier than I can on this one. It's harder to make a really sharp curve. Okay, this is a pretty sharp little curve, so we're going to use this guy with it. Okay, so using the rotary cutter, I can kind of get around that pretty quick. So now we have this issue that it's sewn shut. So the first time I did this, I was like, but wait. And as Rena said, trust the process. There is a reason for these things. So one of the things that we want to do is I want to try to figure out 
which way the nap is going. Looks like it's coming this direction. So this would be down the eye, so I want to cut over here. It really doesn't matter. It's how I get picky. And I, I've been wrong about it half the time. But I always try to check. So you, you like so I literally, sew the little pierogi shut? <laughs> I, I sewed the little pierogi shut, and then I chopped it open. Okay, so you just want to make sure that you're not chopping through both sides. We just got one side we're going to do here, and then we're going to flip this. If I can catch that a little bit easier with the point turner. There we go. Boop. Okay, now the reason that this works is because Cuddle is a knit fabric and it isn't going to fray. So once we've gotten that hole in here, this is going to go underneath. This is the back side of his eyelid. So I don't ever sew it shut. I just leave it like it is. Oh, I got the nap right that time. It's great. Okay. So there's his little eyelid. So let me show you here. Let's do a reality check here. What that looks like is that then his little eyelid is so much. Okay. Got it. Just and, like that. And then that's the nose flap that we and just did. And that's the did, little right? nose flap. Yeah. Which looks so much like a real giraffe. It's <laughs> so good. His little muzzle is adorable. So super cute. Okay. So these are the eyelids. So this week, we're going to go through a bunch of the different parts. And what I want you to do over the next week is to make all these different parts, and then we'll put them together next week. Okay? So eyelids are made like this. I'm going to set those aside. Okay? And that is so much easier than trying to sew this little half circle and trying to get it to be smooth. So that's really the reasoning for that. And it does work much better. You'll find this technique in a lot of different things. We used it just a few weeks ago for the lovey love when we were making the um, the hands and the feet and the ears for that. It's the same technique, which works really well. Okay, these are the cloven hooves. We're gonna talk about that later. Let's talk about the, um, let's do the applique. Okay, so the applique, there's a couple of pieces that have to be applique. So we're gonna do ears. So we're gonna do ears, we're gonna do one ear. And, um, well, wait. Figure out which way. So this is the top. These go in here and in here. And then these are going to get sewn on top. Okay. So there's a little sandwich for each ear. Plus there's a stabilizer that needs to go in that yep. sandwich too. Yeah? Exactly. So the the ears that I did here, so we're just going to keep showing this guy. So the ears on this one, I used a heavyweight stabilizer. So his ears are really pretty stiff, um, which I think is adorable. So we're going to use another st stiff sort of stabilizer today. What I have is a Pellon that is actually, and this is just because this is what I have in my sewing room. It's actually a fusible. We're not going to fuse it. We're just going to cut out and use it. So I'm going to cut out a hunk. I was say if it's bigger than his ear, and then I was like, I should probably just make sure that it's bigger than his ear. Okay, and the reason we're going to do this is to give his ear some stiffness, and it's also going to give some stability when we're doing the um, applique here. All right, so we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to spray base these because that's my favorite way of doing anything. It makes it stay in place so much better. So is that's not the SF-101, though, is it? It is it, not, uh, but you could uh, use SF-101. So this is a heavier weight stabilizer. So you can see it's it's pretty thick. The um, This is the SF-101. Let me get the edge of that, and you can see how, mu how much floppier that is. Got it. Okay, so this is really floppy. This is not. Okay, so it's really just a matter of which you have. If you have, if you just have SF-101, use it. It's totally fine. Just won't make his ear quite as stiff. But really, no harm, no foul. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the basting spray on the back of this. And I'm going to stick it onto here, onto the stabilizer. So sewing, spraying it onto the back of the ear means that I don't have a bunch of overspray here. That's what we're trying to avoid. Hey, Jennifer, we don't know the exact number. She just grabbed something out of her stash. So, of the Pellon? Of the Pellon, yeah, of the Sorry. stiffer Pellon. Yeah, I just used something I had. Oops. 
Okay, so I sprayed the back of that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line up my edges here and pat that down. All right, so now those are all stuck together. They're going to work out just fine. Okay, while I'm here, I'm going to do the belly too. We're going to want to stick that on there. So while I've got the, the spray stuff out, I'm going to do the belly. And the belly is going to get stuck right on here. Here's his front. Okay. Now his belly needs to go on here. The easiest way to figure out where it's supposed to go is to fold it in half. Fold it in half. And then open it up. Okay, so now I can kind of adjust it, but I know it's in the center. All right, and if you remember before, we've done this lots of times, so let's see if it, if it does it again. If I drag this backwards along the nap, I can usually leave a mark that I can spray base and stick it back. Yep. Oh, that's great. And that's, that's you just used the stiletto. It wasn't a marker at all. All that I did was just kind of ruffle up the nap. It just nap ruffles up the nap. So that you can see that line. Yep. Super so then I can helpful. pull this off, spray base the belly, and then stick it right back where I wanted it to be. And no one's any wiser. And the cuddle smackdown. And the cuddle smackdown, exactly. <laughs> All right. So let's come back over here. I'm going to get this guy's trying to watch the sewing a little too closely. Back him up just a little. Come on, little guy. He's just going to follow. <laughs> I, I can't wah, manipulate wah. him well enough from this side. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my thread to a zigzag because I want to zigzag his ears on. So generally speaking, when I'm doing the little zigzags, I found that a two and a half is pretty good. As if you've watched other shows, you'll see we just kind of manipulate it and see what works. I'm going to go ahead and do this one first because I have gray thread and it's going to work fine in my beige. For the chocolate, I'm going to switch it to black. So Rena jumped in and she uses Pell on uh, number 808. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Which may or may not be exactly what you use, but it's super close. And and if it's, Rena's yeah. recommending it, I'll that's what you want. I'll take her recommendation. Yeah. I'm just using what's available. Okay, and I'm just going to stitch around this. So one of the things that you want to make sure when you're doing an uh, applique stitch is that you want to kind of take your time, especially around these corners, and really get it to not ruffle too much. So if you try to if you try to hurry too much, it'll, it'll kind of ruffle up. Okay, I'm just going to stitch this down. So basically, I'm just stitching it so that the 90% of the stitch is on the belly part, and that it just comes off onto the uh, giraffe fabric okay so it's important that you get your stitch wide enough that you're catching it so if you're having a harder time catching it you seem to be missing it a lot you can make your stitch wider you don't have to make it necessarily any longer but you can make it wider okay so just gonna stitch all the way around so you'll notice too that when you do this it's a little bit uh, more likely to move on you with not using a stabilizer behind it so if you want to use a tearaway, if you have an embroidery machine and you have some there, a tearaway stabilizer is fine behind this or a cutaway. But I found that, generally speaking, I can just sew it down and it'll be all right. Do a little lock stitch. So now, even though we used a gray thread in here, you can't see it at all. It just mushes right in. All right, looks totally fine. Do a little zigzag on there. All right, so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, oh, that's a blue, let's go for a dark gray. Wait, that's a cotton. Let me see. Do I just have blue? I have a tiny bit of black. Let's use this tiny bit of black. <laughs> We're going to. We're going to play thread chicken. Play thread chicken. Got it. Okay, we'll see if I can get around it. Okay, I'm going to snip my thread and bring it down through the needle. It's a better way of doing it so you don't get any thread bits stuck in your um, tension discs up there. You should always clip your thread. So I'm going to change the top thread. I'm not changing the bottom thread, mostly because I use pre-wound bobbins, and it's going to be on the back of this, and I don't want to wind a bobbin. 
And I will tell you, if you don't use pre-wound bobbins and you have them accessible to you, they're really the best. I guess I could do this. Oh. Cuddle cannot be microwaved. No, it should not be microwaved. Polyester. Yep, it will melt. No bueno. Okay, so now I've got that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this over. And you saw with both of these, there's no need to use pins at all because it just sticks there with the basting spray. So again, the same way with this one. So this one's going to be a little bit different. And the stabilizer on here is extra important because it gives me stability as I'm sewing around these tight little curves here. Okay. So it gives me a little bit more ability to kind of move the fabric around and make sure I'm getting the edges tacked down as I want to. I should have changed to my open toe foot because I can't see it any better than you can. Okay, just take your time around it. That's all I'm going to do. Is just stitch it down with another zigzag here. And then you'll see this is nice and secure. And I'm going to go ahead and um, trim this and cut off the stabilizer. So real quick, are we using, uh, so what machine are we using? And we're using a walking foot, We're right? using a baby lock chorus, and it is the digital dual feed. I think it's called a compact digital dual feed. And it is a very nice little walking foot variation. So, okay, so you always want to make sure to use a walking foot. I will tell you, and if you've been in any of my classes, I kind of go back and forth on whether I want to use the walking foot for stuffed animal pieces, because sometimes it is a little too big. So sometimes I prefer a regular foot just to get the small pieces. This, all of my seams are pretty big. On some of the other stuffed animals, the seams are all pretty small and I need, it a, I need more room and less walking. Does that make sense? More yes. vis visual yes. room. So, okay, so now I've got my ear. I'm gonna get the, here's the other half of his ear. Here's the other half. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin that. I'm gonna sew around this. Look at, we won that game of Thread Chicken by a mile. We still have plenty of room up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to pin this just a little bit. It's not going to need a whole lot of pins as I work my way around here because it's pretty stiff with this stabilizer back there. All right. So this is a fusible. I don't know if you can see the sheen that's on there. It's definitely like a fusible would want to be fused down to something. This is never going to get ironed, so I don't really care. It's never going to get hot and start to, you know, fuse to something else. Also, it'll be stuck in an ear in just a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch my thread again. You want to put it back to a gray. And mostly you want to do this because even though you can't really see the seams very much. I found that on certain seams like this, because it's getting pulled in two different directions, you'll actually be able to see the dark thread a little bit better. Um, I think one of his ears on that one I did in black and I was like, oops, don't do that. You can end up seeing it just a little bit. Let's see. see nope you can't you can't see it okay yeah so really you know whatever thread color it's fine all right <laughs> your favorite thread color of gray my favorite thread color of gray yes <laughs> i love it okay so what we do want to um make sure that we do is that we're getting a quarter inch seam allowance and honestly that is sometimes easier with a regular foot than a big walking foot um so if you have the ability to move your needle over um, and get an accurate quarter inch, that's what you should do. We're going to give this a shot and hope for the best. Oops. Hurt me. I'm going to put it on the straight stitch again. Okay, so straight stitch, and I'm going to bump it down to a 2.5. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and back stitch. Oh, I was going to try to back stitch. There we go. And I'm just going to use my stiletto here to keep my layers together as I sew. As we've talked about with Cuddle, it's pretty easy to manipulate it and make it do what you want it to do sometimes. Okay. So I'm going to take my time and 
So a couple of little stitches around this corner just to get it to lay a little flatter and then kind of turn around. All right. So now the thing that I found with when I did the ears and I did a heavier stabilizer like this is that it, this is now going to be in my seam allowance, which is not as nice. So we're going to go ahead and trim that out of the seam allowance. So this is a part that you don't have to do, but I prefer it just because I don't like it thick in the seam allowances. A little stitch right there. I'm going to try to trim this out here. So I'm just going to trim around this and not cut any of my stitches. So make sure that you haven't done that. So it's going to be real close. And if you have um, the duck build scissors, if you're if you have embroidery scissors, they actually work pretty well for this sort of thing. So you can kind of slide them underneath there and cut really, really close to that seam allowance. Okay, so what that does is it allows that all to be out of there. I can flip this. I'm use my little point turner. And clover, which I like so much. It isn't listed on the things. I always come up with things and I'm like, oh, oh, I'm using that tool now. Sorry, I didn't tell you. Okay. Push that out. Look at how cute that is. So what's the line say? It says fold on the pattern. Yeah, we're right? just going to get to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so right here on the, these little dots, it says fold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a pin in here, just along that line. And I'm going to get these edges nice and flat. Okay, I'm just going to kind of hold it flat there. And then I'm going to stick a pin in, put it back where it was. I'm going to fold this over. See that cuteness? I see it. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin this again. This might be a spot that you need to use a clip because it's pretty thick. Okay, we've got four layers of cuddle and two layers of, no, we have six layers. Five layers of cuddle? Five layers of cuddle. Sorry. Five layers of cuddle, two layers of stabilizer. Gets a little thick. So I'm going to come back over and I'm going to switch it to a zigzag. And this is at a 4-4 zigzag because all I'm doing right here is I'm just trying to smash this flat. So if I use a bigger zigzag, I thought this was my stiletto for a second. <laughs> That's not going to help. <laughs> my pencil will not help. <laughs> so I'm just trying to smash this area flat and trying to get it to go straight stitch in something that is this thick is harder. I found than making it do a zigzag. Okay. So now I've got that little edge down and I've got an ear that's ready to put in. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside. So these, you're going to make two of these ears. All right, I'm going to put this with my other one over there. All right, okay, let's tackle the horns. So the horns, again, you're going to make two of these. Okay, so the horns are kind of fun because they have this like applique thing on here. But instead of just appliquing it down here, we're actually going to stitch it a little funky. We're going to match our notches. It's going to be upside down. Okay. And I'm just going to pin on either side, basically at that notch. Okay. So when we were cutting it out, I was like, you could just cut off the notches. That's what I told him. And he was like, no, no, it's fine. And I'm now I'm so glad that you didn't, because once I realized what the notches were for, <laughs> I was like, never mind. Okay, we want them. So we're going to pin those notches, and then I'm just going to stitch across here with a quarter inch seam allowance. So right now we're only we've only used a straight stitch and a zigzag. Yep, and that's I think all I'm gonna I, use. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, so straight stitch, cut it down just a little bit, and I'm gonna move this pin. Just the way that it is, I can't get it under my needle, and I want to get this in, get it in position, and put my needle down, and then I'll take my pin out because now it's. It's in there. It's going to get going, I hope. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to keep my stiletto to hold my stuff where it's supposed to be. Now, the kind of interesting thing about this, and Rita could correct me if I'm wrong, is that this is now larger than this. And what that does is it allows you to, to 
miss just a little bit and still get it in position. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to zigzag around this edge and then trim it. And it'll be the same. Okay. So what this was actually super helpful when I did the shaggy because the shaggy was really kind of hard to control. And so it definitely moved from where I originally had it. So you can see it's not exactly even all the way around. And it's really, that's just part of what it does. So don't worry if that's what's happened to you. That's what it's supposed to do. I need to save that stitch. I think I just pushed the pocket. Let's see, I want to memory. Yeah, I think that should do it. We'll give it a try next time when I switch between. I'm still, yeah, I've had a version of this machine for what, three years now. And I'm still learning things. Sometimes there's features like that that you don't actually use that often, so they're hard to remember exactly how you use them, but I think that's what it is. So I really like when I can switch over to a stitch, and it's, it's the one I primarily use. For me, a narrow zigzag and a big zigzag are kind of it. I really don't go in between those too often. Okay. So I'm just stitching this down. If I wanted to be careful, I would stitch this with a dark color. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch this again with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I may end up getting a little piece that shows. We'll see. Okay, so now I just trim this off. Okay, so now we have a little horn tip. It's a little crooked. It happens. I'm not going to care. You can if you want to. I don't know why it ended up so crooked, but it really did. Um, so now what we want to do is we're going to sew. I think it's supposed to be up higher. I don't know. Maybe I did it right. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to leave a turning gap right here. So this is a funky part. So this is the horn. This is a notch, and this is a notch for the turning gap because you're going to stuff this afterward. Okay, so I'm going to do a little stay stitch line here. We're going to do that on both sides. Did I do a zigzag? Yes. Hold on. The flip flop, flip flop. Okay, so now I've done a little stay stitching line. And what that's going to do is give me a place to sew that seam shut later. It also reminds me where I need to make sure to sew beyond when I do this. So let's do the other one and see if I can. If I also sew it incredibly crooked. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pin it right here. You know what might have happened is when I moved that pin, I moved it. Oh, because so you were kind of already, already down in already the machine, in there. right? Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how this one sews, and then we'll know what to blame. We can always blame the fabric. <laughs> Sometimes it does things that even I don't want it to do. Okay. Okay. Trim that. Okay. Got a little caught there. I'm going to flip that up. Yeah, see, it was just me the last time. It's a little crooked, but I think maybe that's how it's supposed to. I don't know. Okay. But see, they just end up different. This one's. They were cut the same, and then this one is much smaller. So this one, like that extra cut bigger the part, same hawk. Right. Okay. So I didn't cut them. So <laughs> well, it was funny because yesterday, one of the things, or maybe it was this morning, but I think it was yesterday, we were talking, and you were like, "I cut both of these at the same time. Like, how are they so different?" So let's talk there about. Was, there was a moment that I remember you having a frustration. So the darker fabric is a little harder to mark on, and and from the back because you're marking on Let's the back. Say, what? We're just making a note that it stayed when I did that little pocket thing. Oh. I just clicked over, so I'm going to click to a straight stitch. Okay, and now I'm going to hit the bat, the zigzag, and it's going to be the size I wanted. So it did oh, stay. Oh, very nice. Okay. So sorry. Marking on the dark fabric. Yeah, right. so that was an issue that is it's definitely an issue. So for a long time, you recommended a silver Sharpie, and I, I, I kind of feel like the silver Sharpies aren't necessarily... I don't, they don't stay juicy long they enough. Don't, they don't last <laughs> as long. They totally do not last as long. That is true. And they are sometimes kind of hard to find and they're a little expensive. So truth is, I still prefer the silver Sharpie. That's my favorite way. But one of the things that you were cutting was the Shaggy, which is a totally different backing. 
totally different backing and much harder to cut accurately. Right. So I basically had to just hold the pattern piece, squeeze it onto the fabric really, really tight and cut around it without drawing on it at all to do the shaggy. But then with this fabric, the darker C3, you gave me a clover marking chalk triangle. Yes. Taylor's, Taylor's chalk triangle. And that worked great. Yes. So the Taylor's chalk works really, really well. Sorry, not a zigzag here. Um, and that one, this is a, it's a vintage one. It's been around for a while, but it's just clover Taylor's chalk. It was great. And it worked great. I enjoyed using it. Okay, so we're going to go back to a straight stitch. I'm stitching my stay stitching line here. Okay, I'm going to hope that I had these. I did not. They're not opposites of each other. Oh. Whoops. That's okay, right. because you have to make them. They need a to be opposite you have to make to a mirror. Yeah. Right, okay. So I'm just going to mark it over here. And um, there's my. But the stay stitching line is not in the right spot anymore in it, either, is it? No, I just, it's gone. There's no stay stitching line. I don't know what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, reading, I'm reading the comments. I'm not paying attention to you. Yep. <laughs> so it is no longer there, and that is totally fine. Okay, but now we have a stay stitching line. So there's no notch on this side either. It's gone. All right, so now I'm going to line these guys up. I'm going to try to get these brown, dark browns to match up. Even though the one is a little... They're going to do it on one side. The other side is not going to work. And that's okay. It's still going to be really cute. And will it be soft? Yes, yes, it will. Hey, look. I made it match. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. Sure. Maybe I just messed it up the same way on both sides. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to pin this. And it's... It's kind of funny because you end up with this tiny little piece that has a ton of pins. We're just going to pin it up. So the thing about this piece that um, surprised me is that we were going to stuff it. So sometimes on these little pieces, they won't get stuffed, but it really did make a difference on what it looked like once it got stuffed. So I'm going to go ahead because this is a weird little bit that I'm sewing right here. So you need to sew this little part right here from the middle of the notch to the raw edge, this little bit. Mm -hmm. So when I sew this, it's going to be, I don't know, a bit of a pain to try to start here and then sew backward. So I'm actually going to start here, stitch backward, and stitch forward twice. Okay, so you're starting in, then you're going to back stitch, mm -hmm. and then you're going to front stitch. And it's really like three stitches in each direction or something. Exactly. Very, exactly. Very so small. I'm going to shrink, shrink my stitch again. I'm just going to go backward to the raw edge, and I'm going to go forward back up here. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little turn. And I'm going to quickly do a back stitch, which I didn't mean to do it that fast, sorry. Okay, and now I have a little, my little seam right here and my little turning gap thing. So oh, yeah, so you got like the L, the L bracket, even though it's very small. The, yes, the L bracket's going to help. It will help it just turn right in. So again, I'm going to stitch out to the edge, then back, and then I'm going to turn, and I'm going to stitch all the way around this guy. Okay, and I'm just going to take my time. There'll be times that you're going to have to stop and kind of pivot. Try to make sure that your edges stay together. And again, it's a little quarter inch seam allowance. So on pieces like this, you may end up having to come back around and stitch it again. And that's kind of the, the price of having a quarter inch seam allowance. But making your seam allowance bigger on a little bitty stuffy is really, it's pretty hard and it do, often doesn't work very well. Okay, so I want to try to get where I could see the stitching from before because I want the, the stem of the horn basically to go straight down from that where the, so it creates a ball at the top. All right, so let me show you. I feel you. like this would be a great mushroom pattern. Yeah, so see how this kind of comes up and then heads out at that seam there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now... We'll go ahead and turn this inside out. So make sure that you've backstitched both those ends because they're going to get some, some pressure here. Actually, let me flip this. See if I can use my sweater to get the first one out. There we go. 
So pencil, a stiletto, probably this point turner would work really nicely too. Something. Okay, and you can see how that kind of just will pop right in there. And then you have a little, a little horn. How cute is that? It's pretty, okay. it's pretty cute. Even if he's a little cockeyed. Okay, so now you're going to make two of those just I, like that. I've never met a giraffe that wasn't. That is true. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's do the legs. I want to make sure that we get through the legs because that's part that you'll want to make before next week too. Okay. So the legs are, there are two sizes. So there are arms and there are legs is really what it is. I would suggest that you start with the bigger ones, which are the legs, because they're easier. So the bigger is definitely easier. Yes. Okay. And then we've got, so you should have four lay or four pieces for the arms, four pieces for the legs, four hoof pieces, and then you'll have two of the circles, okay? Because your legs are put together in pairs and then with this one circle at the bottom. So we're going to start with this guy, okay? I'm going to pair these up. So let's talk about when I cut them out. Um, so yes. I thought I would be super efficient. I'm going to grab a couple of these mm -hmm. guys over here. And you'll you'll remember on each pattern piece there's a nap mar line marker, right? So I've mm -hmm. got the nap facing down so that it pets nicely this way. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? Look at these shapes. If I just these are going to nest perfectly, they will. They'll totally nest perfectly. I'll save all this fabric. I'll get to make. I'll, I'll get two cuts for every one cut. It'll be awesome. This does not work. So it because, looks like it works. Because every other piece ends up with the nap going the wrong direction. Right. So just. So you're going to have to put them on the fabric like this. You'll yep. get a little bit of waste and it's totally fine. And it's totally don't, fine. Don't stress about it. But sometimes, yeah, when we, we want to try to save save space with it because fabric is expensive. Like we know that we want to save it, but really it will end up kind of biting you in yes. the end because you can't like when they fight with each other, it's ugly. So we're not going to do that. All right. So I'm going to put these aside because these are the arms. So before next week, you need to have four arm, like four appendages, limbs. <laughs> yeah. limbs, two arms, two legs. Okay, we're going to do the legs right now. So when I do these, I like to um, kind of piece them all together. So I will do all of these pieces together at the same time. We're just going to do one of them today so that you can see this. But I would do all of those pairs. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin. I can pick the pin up. There we go. So I'm going to pin this edge. Okay, so those edges match. And then I'm going to pin over here. So same idea as we always do with cuddle is try to get the important parts to match first, and then go in between. So normally on straight edges, I like to parallel pin or yeah, pin parallel to the raw edges. But with this, it's just it's a little a little difficult to do because it's such a small area. So I'm basically going to use the same amount of pins, but in perpendicular fashion. Okay, and that gives me a little bit more ability to kind of stretch and play with the fabric and make it fit. Because I want it to fit for sure on these two ends. And if I have to stretch a little in between to make it work, we can do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sew this. And then we'll sew the other one as well. Okay, so again, straight stitch, 2.5, great. I didn't adjust anything. Okay, so I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm going to go forward. And doing that little back stitch and then going forward helps a lot with getting the fabric not sucked down into the feed dogs. If you are having issues with that with your machine, I strongly suggest you use leaders and enders, which is basically like a piece of cotton folded in half that you start sewing with. Keep it on there while you sew the next part and just keep doing that. Um, it really, I'll use this basically as the leader for this next piece. I'm not gonna disconnect it. And what that does is it gives you a place to kind of hold to bring it through so it doesn't get sucked down at all. Okay, it works really well. Really well. I use it a lot for when I'm doing patchwork. So you do a lot of chain piecing in that. It's that same idea. Okay, so again, I've got the corners in there, doing it a little bit of an angle because that seems to help it stay exactly where I want it to be. And then I'll pin one in the middle. And I'm going to make sure because my naps are going to go in opposite directions here, they want to kind of do this. 
where they want to not sit evenly. So I have to force it. I'm gonna force it back and stick a pin in. Okay. And that works pretty well. Because it wants to it wants to go in different directions because the nap is kind of doing, I guess, this sort of thing, and they're pushing against each other. Mm -hmm. And so they're going different ways. Okay, so again, I'm gonna leave that other piece in there. Basically, as a leader, I'm gonna stick this in here up to where my foot is. And then I can just start sewing. So if I need to kind of pull it through, I can give this guy a little tug back there and bring it. Do a little back stitch. So for some machines uh, on these little pieces, they'll want to kind of suck it in a little bit more. And I found instead of getting frustrated, just using leaders enders makes a huge difference in how happy I am to sew that project. <laughs> and then I'm just go ahead and stitch, clip that stitch in between. And now I've got a foot or a leg and a leg. Okay, let's see if I've got my matching. Oh, I do. Great. Okay, so now I'm going to sew my stay stitching line between the, basically the notches. So, right, so open. when I cut these out, we talked about this. There are physical notches in, in the, the pattern. pattern, and mm -hmm. what I did was just sort of transfer them over with a little Sharpie. Exactly. Just made a little tick there, so. And it makes it just as easy when you're cutting it out with a rotary cutter. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch these, stay, uh, the stay stitching lines that we'll use when we want to sew this closed. So whenever there's a gap, I try to do this. I'm turning gap. Because it does really make it a lot easier to sew that closed. It's again, one of those things, like Rita said, trust the process. So I've learned to do that in the patterns is to just follow the pattern, do what it says. Sometimes I get a little bit confused because I'm just like everybody else. Um, and sometimes it doesn't make any sense and I just keep going and hope for the best. And Somehow it always works out, even if my mohawk is a little fluffy on that guy. <laughs> it still worked out, even I when I was wrong. He's, I think he's adorable. He's pretty cute. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew the side seams, and I'm going to leave this turning gap. So we're actually going to have a little hole up here still when we're done, but this is going to be the turning gap that we're going to turn it outside, right side out with, and it's going to be what we stuff it with later. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to get these seams to kind of match up with each other. You can nest them. I've found that opening them works a little bit better for me. So really it, it is a matter of what works best for you. But trying to get those to match up is good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a pin in here. Make sure that I'm gonna stop and start at the right places. So again, I'm gonna start in just a little bit. Put my foot down, my needle down, the back stitch. So I always try to back back stitch to the edge rather than starting on the edge because it helps a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna get to my turning gap line, do a little pivot, and then do a little back stitch. Come on, there we go. For anybody who's sort of new to this construction method, the little L bracket thing that she's doing here, where she pivots and comes off the side, can you tell us why? why? <laughs> yeah. So it really does make a huge difference in the turning gap function basically um so when i get this one done i'll show you what it does because you couldn't really see so much on that little guy and we did it on the horns mm -hmm. okay so on here i've got the turning gap and i've got it marked so what this does is two things is it stops it from pulling which i didn't do on a little stuffy yesterday and hawk stuffed it and it ripped out the seams so this like stops that from happening i can push really hard on that it's not going to break the seams okay so it gets that nice and secure and then on here when i turn it over the seam allowance just flips in so that's extra helpful and then when i go to sew this closed these little lines that are on there from where the stitching is those are the guides for me to stitch it closed so it'll be a nice quarter inch seam allowance so it does so many things all at once. So it makes a, good, a turning gap so much more easy to deal so with. So much easier. And yeah, because one of the things with this is when you put it together, technically the, tur the turning gap um, should be at the center, like the center seam. To put it on the inside. So when you hand stitch it closed, it'll be on the inside of the leg and you won't see it as much. Like, you know, there's these things that you do to try to hide where it can be a little uglier. And what I have found is when I do these turning gaps like this, I can make it so that the turning gap is invisible, basically, which is fabulous. Okay, hold on, I can't, I can't see. My bottom one is wanting to move over, so I'm trying to get it in check. 
So I always want to kind of be able to see both side seams or side the raw edges there. So when I get lost on one, I had to go check it. Okay, and I can see that these two didn't quite match, so I'm gonna I'm gonna err on the side of making it match on the lower one. All right, so now we've got this whole thing. So now I've got a leg. I'm gonna turn it inside out. We'll turn it right back out, but just to show you where we're at, okay? So now this is the hoof of a leg, okay? But now we gotta sew this guy on there. So we have to do that right side, right sides together, which will definitely be easier this way. And I'll say one of the things that I like to do is divide this now into quarters. So we've got halves, where we have a notch and a notch and those go on my side seams, but I also like to match the quarters. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fold it the other direction so that my seams match here. And then I'm gonna stick a pin in. And I'll do the same thing on this side, making sure that my seams still match. Come on over here, another little pin in here. Okay, so now I've got my, I've got four places to match up on here. I'm gonna do the same thing on here is just fold this in half. And you can mark this with a marking pen as well as sticking a pin in here. Okay. When you add that pin as a marker, I see you kind of just wiggle it through a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can get like really close. Look at that. You can't see it, but everybody else can. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so the reason I do that is it's less likely to fall out. So I can bang this around quite a bit and those pins won't fall out. Got it. That's why I do it that way. Because at this point, I'm, it's going to get banged around a little bit as I'm moving things around. And I found that I would often lose the pin while I was doing this. And it was super frustrating to have to take it apart and try to match something or just kind of aim blindly. So I try to stick my pins in there in a way that aren't going to come out as I'm working with it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin the quarters because these are easy. And I'm not going to care where it's matching or if it's matching on anything except for these quarters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, match up that last one. And now this is the thing. If you have not sewn hooves onto a stuffy yet, it will seem like it is not going to match, but it really will. And basically it just kind of has to curl out a little bit. So this part has to kind of come out. If you try to do it this way, so that these are really nice and straight, this doesn't seem like it's going to work at all, but it's going to sit like this. So we can get it to work like that. Okay. I think I understand. So the edges, the top edge is just going to kind of curl out a little bit. So really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to so pin like, that over. Which way does it want to be a potato chip? Yes. <laughs> and basically this is going to be flat and this is going to get bent over just a little bit. And you're just going to make sure that it matches. So the hooves are something that I always tell if you're going to pin a lot, a pin a lot. Okay. Do not pin deep. So pin right along the edge still. So I'm not trying to bury my pin in here. I'm trying to keep it just up at the top. Okay, and this has only one of these. Is... It's like one of these is through two and one of them is through one. There we go. All right. So again, I just keep trying to match it in one spot and not worrying about the other. So now I need to grab some more pins because more pins are better. Did um did it matter which direction the nap was going on the hoof bottom? Okay, so on the first one, it does not matter. You will, it will, it will fix. Like one of them will be right. The other one, you can try to make it so that the inner, the turning gap, is going to be inside, and make the other one match. So this one, the nap is coming this direction. So on the other one, the nap would come this direction if the turning gap is over here. What I have found is that I just sew them on, and then when I get to putting them on the legs, I make sure that the nap is one way or the other. I make the, na make the naps match on the, when I'm putting the legs <clears throat> on, and rather than when I'm sewing the hooves on. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And that has to do with the, how you drew it onto the fabric in the first place, the bottom, because it has 
those little right because it has these little guys these will always it. be the side you're seats. either going to be up or down you're not yes. going to end up with it left or right exactly as long as you have these going you know sideways so that you you've drawn it as the nap direction shows you with the hooves these are on the east and west sides okay then yes your nap is going to or your hoof is going to be like this or like this and if you put it on like this you just turn the whole leg over when you sew it onto the body got it okay so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin in between these one more time, but I'm pinning from the other side. This is important. That is a big note right there. So what this does is in between these, there's still a lot of wiggle room here that they can move on me. So I pin from this side and it gets it a little bit flatter. Okay. There we go. So, so you can see there's still quite a bit of a wiggle. And let's go ahead and... Pin it in there. And they kind of sort of counteract each other. They like, do, and it keeps this whole yeah. thing a little bit flatter. And you'll notice that it'll lay pretty darn flat. And in all of my classes, I always people ask which way to, to sew it. I always, always sew it this way because I have more control over these pleats that are happening up here than if I sew it like this. So you'll be able to see if it's a better circle sewing it this way, but you're very likely to get pleats on this side. So my recommendation is to sew it this way. If you find it really frustrating, try it the other way. You may be one of the oddballs who it works better that way. <laughs> and goofy, I, goofy foot sewer. You sewers. might be goof, a goofy footed sewer. Okay. So I'm just going to start anywhere on here. It doesn't matter. I'm going to stick my needle down. Okay. And I'm going to pull my pin out. Now, this is a really. Whoa. Thanks. Come what? on, focus. Auto focus. Yeah. Jumping all over the place. Sorry. Um, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to use my stiletto a bunch for this because I really want to try to keep this edge nice and even. And I'm just going to sew all the way around. Just kind of keep this a little bit taut, I guess. So I do keep some pressure because otherwise it wants to do this. So I kind of pull it just a little bit just because it will, it'll wrinkle up on me and that's not what I want. So I'm just trying to keep a little bit of pressure on that seam as I come around here. And then I will just keep readjusting moving things around and working my way all around the foot. Okay. Now it's funny because one of the things about this is that sometimes you'll get a really good circle and then sometimes you'll do this and you'll be like, I don't know how that's ever going to look like a circle. I will tell you, turn it inside out first, see if it looks circular ish <laughs> and then go from there. So you don't have to be as precise with these circles as you do if you are sewing them with cotton. So if you are sewing with cotton, you will have to be very, very careful about not getting any puckers and making sure that it's a very nice circle because it will show. With the cuddle, this is definitely one of those places where the uh, forgiveness of the fabric is very evident, which is great. I love it for stuffing, so it's perfect. Okay, so again, we're going to come around this corner and I'm going to try, or not, it's really not a corner, but the side seam, and I'm going to try to get that side seam to lay out flat. We're going to try to give everybody a slightly different camera angle and okay. see if um, we get any more information out of it. Let me get the, the giraffe out of the way. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to circle over where I stitched before and do a little back stitch and clip my thread. All right. So now I've got a little circle. We'll see how the bottom looks. Looks pretty okay. Okay, it's circular-ish. Yeah, I'm going back around. <laughs> it's circular-ish. Okay. Close enough. You can see like little spots like this is where it kind of like you jut over with the cuddle. It won't make any difference at all. It's pretty good. A couple little spots like right here. I got another little jerk that happened. And some of that's for just from moving the fabric around in a circle. It won't make any difference. I can get real picky on this side and then it doesn't matter when I get over here. So another thing that's different with sewing it with cuddle is that none of this needs to be clipped. So this curve is totally fine. It's just going to fold right in, okay? which is for me really one of the perks about sewing stuffies with, with the cuddle fabrics. It's just really nice. Okay? I'm going to work our little leg out. And there's your hoof. Ta-da. Okay. So <laughs> you're going to make, so I, like I said, do the, do the legs first. They're bigger. So you'll do two legs and then you'll do two arms and they're just a little bit smaller. So this little circle is a little, a little tighter, but once you've practiced it twice, you'll actually be surprised at how easy those are to do. 
So actually, it's pretty darn easy. We'll talk about the cloven hose next week, and I will tell you if they are not as easy. <laughs> but they are so, super cute. They are super cute, and I did them with the cow, uh, with the bovine. So if you do those, you just have to give yourself some time and patience um, and work work through them that way, okay? So what I want, if you're gonna, if you're gonna sew along with me, and I, I know that there are several of you who are, so I hope that you will continue to do it. I want you to have all of the arms and legs done. You'll have the belly. What are you like? Did you laugh? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. No, I um, coughed. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what did I say <coughs> that was funny? Um, that somebody was gonna sew along with me and make Excuse this. Me. No, please make it. No, I know. Um, so please, you're gonna do the belly. You'll do the legs, the arms. You'll get your little nose flap sewn. Okay. We'll get that ready to sew together later. You'll have your ears made and your horns, okay? Oh, and then sew your tail. So the tail, oh shoot, we're gonna finish that one real quick. Okay, so the tail, I will tell you what I did with this one is that I stitched these together and then when I sewed it together, I only sewed it down most of the side. So let me show you on here, is that this, Yep, this side here, I actually hand stitched this closed and these tails are still floppy open. So I'm gonna actually hand stitch these, but you can sew them onto the, sew them onto this guy and then we can hand stitch them or sew them around later. We'll want to leave a turning space here because for me it was too thick. So maybe Rena has a, has a tip on that one, but I found it too thick to get through this little bitty bit of the, of the tail. Okay, so if that's confusing, it's okay. We'll be back next week and I'll show it to you. And we are going to okay. do a cloven hoof next week. We yes? will show that how to okay, do the good. cloven hoof and how. I think yeah. it's a. I think it's a great. I think it's a great one too. Okay. Important thing. So we'll work through that and um, so if you can have those parts done, then we'll work about we'll um work on putting it all together. It's actually not a hard assemble, and it will be really easy if you have all of those pieces, kind of made and ready to go. Yes. We have a question from way back at the beginning, and uh -huh. I wasn't sure if we would get to it today or not. But if people are going to get this pattern and buy the fabric and sew along with you, mm -hmm. let's get them their eyes. Where do oh. they get the eyes if they want to oh. order those and get them so, to show up? So the eyes, there's a couple of different places that you can get them. Um, oh, shoot. Um, Rena, if Rena's still there, she has a couple of that she uses. Um, 60, 60 eyes, I think is what is one of them I've used in sun, sun catcher. And then there's glass eyes online. And I think glass eyes online is the one that a lot of people who make, um, good stuffies use. And there is definitely a difference in the quality finish that you'll get. A lot of the ones that Rena uses, actually, you can like paint the eyes. Mm, the glass oh, eyes can, online, right? Then yeah. you can paint the backside and yeah, so you can make it any, any color that you want or use a different fabric back there. There's a lot of things that you can do with them. The 20 millimeter eyes will work, but she highly recommends, and I do too, the 30 millimeter eyes. They're a little bit, a little bit bigger and nice to use. So they give a little bit better appearance. We'll also talk about how to put those cute little eyelashes on there. So that'll be fun. <laughs> okay. So do we have a winner for? For oh, today, let's find out. We should have a winner. I'm going to sew this together, and then I'll show you what I was talking about too while we're doing while we're doing winter stuff. All we right, we'll be back next week. We've got him. Okay, so we have Michelle Herman on YouTube. I recognize that name, and Stephanie Serez on Facebook. Congratulations! Yay. Sometime between now and next week, I will cut out two <laughs> giraffe kits. You will get a free pattern from uh, from Rustic Horseshoe, and I will cut you out all of those pieces. It's going to be dealer's choice on which fabrics are which. Yeah. <laughs> but so, you will you will get you will get the baby giraffe for the body. Yes, for sure. And so you need to make sure and email us at info at shannonfabrics.com. Send us your mailing address and your phone number. We'll need both of those. And of course, your email email address will come through there. We will be emailing you the PDF pattern. We'll send you the kit. So make sure you send us all of that information so we can get that stuff sent off to you. Is that good? That's great. Okay. That, that, that daytime phone number is important for me to be able to get stuff shipped to you. It is. So please include that. And congratulations, y'all. Okay. Yes, congratulations. All right. So I'm going to show you just really quick on the tail before we leave really quick. So what I was saying is you would sew down around here, around here, and then up. What I found is that I needed to leave a little gap here so that it had some freedom that I would hand sew later. So to get the, the tail get to turn to work inside through. out. Okay, yeah. got it. So you could try it and then take some stitches out if you needed to. That's what I did. 
So, you know, <laughs> do your best. And we'll be back next week to put this whole thing together and we will have our own little giraffe. I'm very excited. So if you have not joined us on I Love Cuddle, make sure that you join us over there. It's a Facebook group full of people who are also cuddle enthusiasts. We also have a Sew Together Tuesday Facebook page that you can follow that we promote other stuff on and that we share lots of good stuff um, there. I feel like there was something else I was supposed to tell them about. I think that might be it. I think we're it. I think, follow us I on think Instagram and all that good stuff. Get, Subscribe. We'll you know. be back next week. We'll same bad time, week. same giraffe channel. That's right. Exactly. All right. Until <laughs> next week. Happy sewing.